Hello and welcome back everyone. We are at the start of chapter 4 for Trails in the Sky second chapter. Um, we are currently aboard the Cecilia heading towards Bose uh, and Estelle just found out that Joshua was in Bose with the Kapua family so she's upset about that and we need to go around and talk to our group members while on the airship. And apparently we found Ricky and Anton. <laughs> so suddenly Anton decides he absolutely needs to go to Bose. This uh, happens a lot, so I'm tagging along to keep an eye on him. Could be fun playing tourist while along for the ride at least. I'm not one to smolder away in the capital. That's not me. No siree. I'm going to travel liberal wherever my legs can take me. I know that somewhere out there, there's someone who needs me and I'm going to find that someone. A little bit of a romantic. Hmm. I'm going to the Hockett Gate. Wasn't so long ago that I thought real peace with the Empire would have been impossible. Now it's almost upon us. This is a real victory for Queen Alicia's diplomatic efforts, I suppose. Tomorrow's the day they finally sign the non-aggression pact. It's been ten years now since the Hundred Days War. Perhaps it is time we make proper peace with the Empire. I'm kind of surprised that the story didn't have us stay in the capital for the signing of the pact. I figured we would be there for it. This lady says she runs a store in the city of Roland. I'm part of the staff for Ed Edels, Edels, I never know how to pronounce it. I think I change it every time I say it <laughs> in Crancel, so we got to talking about that. I bet it'd be wonderful to run your own store. Who cares if it's a tiny hole in the wall, even? Oh, I wish I could have a store of my own someday. Couldn't find any girls around I would like, even in Crancel. What am I going to do for that boy? <gasps> She's still trying to set him up? So Rhinon's the guy who runs the department store. This is his mom who lives upstairs. It keeps trying to set him up. <laughs> I'm just glad I met this girl to talk to on the trip back. I'm sure Rhinon would like her a lot, but... Oh, jeez. Roland up next, hmm? I'm not going there today, but I'd like to spend some time on a farm there someday. Delicious food, clean mountain air, the perfect place to refine one's beauty. Plus, my guy wants to go fishing, so there'd be something for him to do as well. Assuming the farm has fishing. I've heard Roland has a lot of nice fishing spots. Roland itself isn't too famous, though, so they're all kind of secret. I should try them before someone writes a guide or something. <laughs> yeah, not a bad plan. That passenger's a student from the Royal Academy, isn't she? Yeah, I can definitely tell she is. You really get a sense of refinement from every move she makes. That's not just because of the Academy, but you are correct. Hello, Estelle. Chloe, so this is where you've been hiding. <laughs> yes, it's a lovely view, isn't it? I'm guessing you're on one of your airship walks? Ah, yeah, kind of felt the need. What's happened to Joshua? What? Uh, how did you... <laughs> thought so. So that was what Neil wanted to talk to you about. Did you just bait me, princess? Well, I am the possible heiress to a nation. Let's just say I'm well-educated in secret royal bargaining tactics and leave it at that. I'm no match for you, really. Yeah, it's about Joshua, all right. So Joshua is safe, and even still in the borders of Liberal. But there's some element to it that means you can't be happy about it. Is that about it? Um, that is it, that is it isn't it? Chloe, you aren't a princess, you're a freaking mind reader. You ask me, you've got this queen thing in the bag. <laughs> Thanks. Still, that's good. Joshua is safe. Even knowing he's okay is a relief. Yeah, I was happy to find that out too, but... Still? Chloe, you remember when we went to arrest Dalmore, right? And how Joshua responded when Dalmore threatened me with that gun? I do. If nobody else does, I do. <laughs> I do, yes. 
If I said that Joshua's eyes are like that, right now, what would you think? Well, I... Sorry, Chloe. I shouldn't really drop questions like that on you without context. No, it's fine. I can understand, at least a little, why you're so worried. Yeah. And, um, on a note that's absolutely in no way related at all. Like, yeah, totally has nothing to do with anything. Totally hypothetical, but, um, what would you say if I said, while I'm here worrying my butt off over him, he's with another girl? <laughs> Her first question is, how old? <laughs> that is not what I expected. About the same age as us. To answer this hypothetical question, I would find myself uninterested in any excuse Joshua would have to make. I know, right? It'd be totally out of line. Certainly. Just what are you thinking, Joshua? Yeah, my current plan is to have Olivier sing at him for an hour, and then we'll hear everything. <laughs> That's one way to torture him. Thanks, Chloe. I feel a little bit better now. You're welcome, Estelle. I'm glad I could help you. Once I get my head on a bit straighter, I'll tell everyone what's happened. Can you keep quiet until then? Of course. I think I'll head back to my seat. Okay, see you later. Oh, so she's not going to be back in here. Okay. As I walk around trying to talk to everybody twice. Oh! Oh! I didn't want to talk to Tita yet, I wanted to come see what was down here first, but apparently I had a scene with Olivier. Hmm, I see. No, actually, the reporter came to talk to Estelle. Estelle seemed bothered after they spoke. I did wonder what... Huh. Well, that answers that. Yes, that's fine. We needn't report anything to the Royal Army yet. I imagine he has predicted all of this anyway. I called it perfectly, no? Well, to be honest, it was a little more than a wild guess. But I suppose even jokes can be true sometimes. Even the bad ones. I know, I know. You needn't raise your voice so, my friend. Regardless, you're to see to our preparations the moment you return to the Imperial Capital. Yes, so that he might intervene if possible. As always, you have my special thanks. He, has, he just has to make it weird. Like, clearly he's on the phone with Mueller. Who else would it be? And he just has to make it weird at the end. You have my special thanks. Not just, you have my thanks, or is something normal like that. No, it's Olivier, so he has to make it weird. Ah, uh, Joshua. To think you'd be a match for Mueller. I suppose I should have expected nothing less from one of Ouroboros' chosen. Still, that's one guess I dearly wish hadn't been true. What's true now? Er, Estelle. And what the heck are you whispering about down here? You and... Huh? Olivier, who are you talking to? Uh, whatever could you mean? Do you truly believe I would engage in a secret soiree with a woman other than my Estelle? I can only pray. But come on. I know I heard you talking with someone. Oh my. You heard me talking to myself, did you? Talking... To yourself? Well, talking to myself like a madman wouldn't quite be accurate. I was going over lines from a play I once performed in, wherein I was the leading man. Play lines? But why here? Our destination, Bose, is the closest city in Liberal to my homeland. As we draw closer to it, I must confess I feel the pull of homesickness. I fear that memories of home cannot help but tumble from my mouth. Oh. Uh, okay. Do you think I have cottage cheese for a brain or something? Or, well, you know, there's a lot of suspicious things about you, Olivier. I remember you were talking with Dad about something secret, too. You mind coming straight with me about why you're really here? Hmm. To think you've become such a bloodhound for the truth. You've grown, Estelle. I've had good teachers. So talk already, Mr. Erebonian, suspicious person. Hmm. 
Allow me to relieve some of your worries in exchange for my silence. I would ask that you grant me a small favor. You are troubled over the theft of the bandit airship, yes? I do not think that will prove to be a problem. What? Why not? You recall our earlier conversation? The fact that the bandits are led by former Erebonian nobility is an embarrassing blemish on the Empire's image. The Burl does not wish to exacerbate the issue any more than we do, however, as it could impede the signing of the pact. So if anything, the theft of the ship, at this exact moment, conveniently sweeps aside a problem. Is that really how it would work? Well, if the bandits return to their old ways in liberal skies, that would be a different story. I find it unlikely they would be so foolish, however. That's true. If nothing else, Joshua won't let them steal from others. Wait, how do you know they won't return to piracy? Why did you agree? <sighs> now then, I think I shall return to my seat. Would you care to join me? I think I'll pass. Hey, Olivier, can I ask you one thing before you go? Naturally. Okay, look, there's a lot I don't know about you, and you seem to like to keep your distance from everyone, but even so, I think you're a really important part of the team. I believe, and maybe it's crazy as hell, I don't know, but I do, that I can trust you, no matter what. Oh jeez, that came out kind of sappy. What I'm saying is, uh... Hey, what's with the drippy dinner plate eyes? No, it's nothing. You touch my heart, my fair Estelle. You need not fear. I shall not betray your trust, nor do I find your trust and love a burden. I give myself gladly to your cause. A love has nothing to do with it, but thanks, Olivier. Of course, so if you'll pardon me. Passenger with a white coat sure is something. He was like totally muttering to himself. I wonder what that was about. And Lenny started laughing in the middle of it. Oh, I wonder if he's a dangerous psycho. That'd be so cool, but also kind of freaky. <laughs> well, he may be a psycho, but he's not dangerous to most people. Tita, what you doing? Oh, Estelle. Um, I was kind of thinking about things. Things? Like what? Well, um, Estelle? I'm not really reliable, am I? Huh? You seem like you're worried about something. But is it something I, can, I can't help with? Oh, um... Oh, man. Even Tita sees right through me. I knew it! I knew it was kind of selfish to ask to come along, and I'm not really much help. I, I couldn't even stop Ren. I'm just holding you back, aren't I? That is so sad. It's heartbreaking. Tita? Oh, you little dummy. You're worried about that? But, but, I'm not really worried, you see. It's more like I'm confused about something. I don't think it's really something anyone can solve for me, so I just need time, some time to think on my own, okay? But Estelle, isn't there anything I can do to help? You bet there is. Oh, hug. Mm, this is so relaxing. So soft, so cuddly, so warm. I could squeeze you all day. Aw, Estelle. Tita, having you along is a big help, okay? I don't just mean your mechanical knowledge, even though that's part of it. Just seeing you smile cheers me up a lot. Even Ren looked like she had a lot of fun when she was playing with you, right? Now, maybe that was all just an act to fool us so she could do evil Ouroboros stuff or something. But you know what? Somehow I can't believe it was all a lie. You reached her. I know it. Do you really think so? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> There's that smile. Excellent. Your smile is the best, you know. Now, 
They're also cute and huggable when you're all sniffly and sad, but... Oh, Estelle. Thank you, Estelle. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to my seat, okay? Okay, see you in a bit. Alright guys, still just singing away. Okay, now who haven't I talked to? Oh, they're like all sitting with each other. That's kind of cool. My wife works me to the bone and complains all the time. It's rough. I didn't know that about the Mistwald. Okay, so I haven't talked to Agate, Shira, or Zin. So I'll talk to them and then maybe see if anybody has a second set of things. Estelle, what's up? Oh, uh, just having my usual walk around the ship. Ah, right. Huh. I'm kind of amazed you don't get bored with it. Why do you treat me like a hyperactive palm? We've just got time before we hit Bose, is all. Enough time for a quick nap, at least. So Bo's up next, huh? Ruan, Zeiss, Grancel. Wonder what the society will try throwing at us next. Yeah. Nothing would be the best answer, but I have a feeling we won't be that lucky. You too, huh? Well, let's hit the ground running and get to investigating those bandits once we land, yeah? Wait, what? Why the surprise? It's possible they're working for the society. You said it yourself, remember? Uh, yeah, I did, but... Come to think of it, I don't think that's all that likely, you know? Yeah, it's sort of stupid. <laughs> I mean, we fought them a number of times, right? They didn't really seem to be the kind of baby eaters the society usually brings on, I think. Well, whatever. I'm sure we'll hear the details from old Lugrin when we get to Bose. Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll have to pass through Roland before we reach Bose, so this will be a bit of a trip. Go ahead and walk off some of that nervous energy if you want. I already am, Shira. Ah, uh, Estelle, where'd you disappear off to? Oh, um, I just went to get some fresh air. I see. So I heard we'll be landing in a town called Roland on the way. That's your hometown, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, to be specific about it, our house is just a bit outside the city limits. Dad wanted it that way, apparently. Interesting. A house built by Master Cassius. Must be quite a place. I, uh, don't know about that. I mean, I'm not sure if I'd say it's fabulous or anything, but it is really comfy. It holds lots of memories for me of Dad, Mom, and Joshua, too. I see. No, Zen, it's okay, really. If we were staying in Roland, I'd invite you over. Next time, for sure. I'll look forward to it. By the way, Estelle, when we arrive in Bose... Would you mind accompanying me on some training? Huh? This seems kind of sudden. Back at the Grand Cell Guildhouse, not only did I miss the sleep agent and the cookies, but I was unable to awaken myself. It's obvious I need to retrain in some of the areas I've been neglecting. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I don't know how good a training partner I'd be for an A-rank bracer, but if you want me, you've got me. That's settled then. Oh yeah, I forgot he went back to roll on the Shira. Yes, I will talk to him from behind his back. Alright. So we talked to everybody. Huh. 
It's weird. We talked to everyone, but it's not moving forward. I'm not missing any of my team members, right? It should have been everyone. Okay. I had to go downstairs and then come back upstairs. <laughs> probably find your seat, Estelle. It really is dangerous to stand during a landing like this. Aw, poor Zen has to sit by himself. Huh? Oh my. What in the name of Gehenna? How could we have entered a cloud at this altitude? We didn't enter a cloud, sir. We're descending. This doesn't seem like a cloud, though. It's more like... Captain, transmission from Roland Air Traffic Control. The city, the city and surrounding area has been engulfed in a deep fog. What? What the heck? Wow, it's completely white. Hmm, did we enter a cloud bank? Possibly, but this also seems impossibly low to be a cloud. Is this usual when landing an airship? I sure as hell have never seen anything like this. Nor have I. Ladies and gentlemen, please, um, remain calm. We've received word from Roland that a deep fog has appeared over the entirety of the city and surrounding area. Air Control is currently preparing searchlights to aid our landing. Thank you for your patience. Fog? Roland does get fog, but it's usually just like a thin fuzz, isn't it? Yes, I don't ever remember seeing it this thick. This really worries me. You and me both, Shira. It's completely white. Yeah, you can't see anything. It looks like the Port Authority is grounding all flights until the fog clears. Hmm. I think we'll want to visit the Guildhouse here. Thought so too, huh? Huh? Why? This fog is deep and strange enough that even you and Shirazar comment on it, Estelle. It's possible the society is behind this. Somehow. Ah. Hmm. Only Roland and Bose remain unmolested by their hands. It is possible their next experiment shall be here then, and not in Bose. Oh, I suppose that was the weird area between chapters. I wasn't actually in chapter 4, but now I am. Now we're in chapter 4. I certainly wasn't expecting you all to show up now, of all times. You were heading to Bose last I heard. We were, yes. The paranoid little part of me can't help but wonder if this is intentional. Well, I'm not going to complain about having you around. Anyway, I do believe this is the first time we've seen each other since you went off to train, Estelle. You look right at home in that new outfit. Aw, Ina, you'll make me blush. Mr. Vathic, Milady Claudia, Miss Russell, I believe this is the first time we've met. I'm Ina, the receptionist for the Roland branch. A pleasure to meet you all. The pleasure is mine, Miss Ina. Um, nice to meet you. Uh, good to meet you at last, Ina. I've heard a lot about you. Really? I wonder. Oh, and Olivier is here too. What are you doing over there, Olivier? <laughs> Hiding from Ina? Because <laughs> she tricked him under the table. 
<laughs> Don't, uh, mind me. I was certainly not flashing back to memories of the destruction of my liver. Just for the record. What? <laughs> just let him be, Ina. Oh, and I'm guessing you know Agate. We've met, yeah. I don't come up by Roland much, so we've only met, like, once or twice. It's still good to see you again, though, Agate. So, with the pleasantries out of the way, I'm sorry, but do you mind if we get straight to business? Of course, go ahead. This fog appeared suddenly today around dawn. At first, it seemed to be little more than the usual light mist we get here at times, but you could literally stand outside and watch it grow thicker. It was eerie. Do we have any idea what's causing it? None, I'm afraid. It's definitely covering all of the city, but we're not sure of its full extent or source yet. Fog and mist have several common sources. You can get the sort that springs up off coast and flows inland, or the kind that forms in mountain basins. Hmm. There are several basins in the Curl Mountains near Roland, are there not? There are, yes. It is possible this is simply a freak act of nature. But with everything that's been happening recently, we should be on our guard. Should we put off heading for Bows and remain in Roland for now? That's the best idea, I think. Passenger ships sure ain't move until this soup clears anyway. Um, but... What's up, still? Well, I was just thinking about the bandits and stuff. We were checking that out because we had no other leads, remember? The Royal Army's on top of that anyway, so we don't really have to go, you know? But... Look, what is it? Something eating at you? Um, no, but... It's just... I... Estelle. I'm not exactly sure what you're thinking, but calm down and consider for a moment. Huh? The bandit ship theft chate Bandit ship theft case <laughs> is already over, in a way. If they'd taken hostages, it'd be different. But as it is, there's no emergency demanding we take action. And I can't imagine they'll stay in bows in any event. That's true, but... On the other hand, something bizarre is happening before our eyes at this very moment. If the society is somehow behind this, there's a good chance Roland is in danger. So, which is the correct choice here? Estelle... Um, Miss Shira? I think Estelle has a reason she wants to go, so, um... No, Tita. Shira's right. Sorry, Shira. I guess I wasn't really paying attention to what's happening. You don't need to apologize. Everyone has times they have trouble focusing. Even I do, and I know Agate sure does. Now hang on, Ed. Being able to determine the best path without losing sight of yourself is a crucial skill for a bracer, even if it is a bit easier to just say it's important than it is to actually do it. I'm still a student on that front too, really. I can hardly compare to Master Cassius in that regard. Really, Zen? To possess perfect clarity and retain one's good cheer in the face of adversity, it requires experience, and Master Cassius's ability to do just that saved us many times when he traveled to Calvert once. Huh, I didn't know that. Hey, don't sweat it, alright? Not as if you can just snap your fingers and be at the old man's level. You just gotta put one foot in front of the other and get better, bit by bit. Yeah, thanks guys. Um, sorry, Ina. That kind of sidetracked us. It's fine. So getting back to the matter at hand. At this point, there's nothing really specific we can ask you to do. You can hardly beat Fog with violence, after all. I'd simply ask that you be on standby in case anything does happen. You can wait at your home if you'd like, Estelle. Oh yeah, I was going to head home for a bit. Is there anything else we should watch out for besides that, though? Hmm, well... If you absolutely want to do something, could I ask you to check the roads for me? The roads? What for? The fog is covering the entirety of the city. However, it also seems to have spread out into the countryside. The thing is, I don't know how far it's spread yet. If you could go see how far it's gone, it would help me consider where we go from here. Ah, and we also need to secure land routes in case the passenger ships continue to be unusable. Exactly. There's the Elise Highway to the south, the Milch Main Road to the west, and the Malga Trail to the north. Could you check those three and let me know the extent of the fog? Sure, that should be pretty easy. Well then, for once, this means Estelle and I will be the guides. 
Yeah, kind of a change, huh? We know pretty much everything about Roland. Well, who'll be going with you then? Dang it! Uh, need my healer. And the question is, do I take Olivier or Agate? I think probably Agate. So Olivia is a lot stronger in arts than Agate is, but Shira's already decently strong in arts and physical attack. Oh, I really don't know. Let's do it. I'm take Agate, I guess. I love the Roland music. This is ridiculous. I know the city like the back of my hand, and I still feel like I could get lost in this soup. And that, Estelle, is why you have a map and compass. If you feel like you're losing direction, be sure and keep an eye on them. Yeah, good point. Okay, so we need to check just how far the fog spread on the roads, but, um, Agate? Chloe? Do you mind if we stop by my house and see how things are there? Sure, no problem. A visit to your home, Estelle? I'd love to see it myself. Well, let's be off then, hmm? But first, check the stupid board. Oh, Armand! Armand and Ellie! So they did, they did get engaged? Oh. <laughs> In fishing spots, we'll gladly recruit anyone from master fishers to professional investigators. I know it's a bit far, but I'll be winning at the Garoon Gate. Monster on the Lee's Highway, Monster on the Milch Main Road. Okay. So we're going to end this episode right here. In the next one, we will walk around town, talk to pedestrians, uh, check out the shops, maybe work on a little bit of the side quests, and then head down to the house, I think. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.